Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back to the proof that Islam is the truth. And in our previous episode, we were discussing the prophecies of Prophet Muhammad, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him in the Bible. And now today we're going to be dealing with another fascinating subject, and that is the subject of prophecies. Now we mentioned in our previous episodes how the Bible in both Deuteronomy 18:18 18, 18, and also in Isaiah, uh, and also in the Gospel of John, uh, in those passages we quoted that the Comforter, the Paraclete, Ahmed, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, that Prophet, he will foretell them of things to come. And this is a quality of a Prophet because Allah alone indeed is Alimul Ghaibi. He is the one who has knowledge of the unseen. It is only Allah who truly knows the future. And this is something that is mentioned in the Bible as an actual criterion, who is a true prophet and who is a false prophet? How can you know someone who is really prophesying and who is really a prophet from God and one who is not? One of the criterions that you can apply is, does the things that he foretells, do they take place? Do they actually happen? Okay, so the Bible says, and if you shall say in your heart, how shall we know the word which the Lord hath spoken? If the thing followeth not, nor come to pass, then that is the thing which the Lord has not spoken. But the prophet has spoken presumptuously, and thou shalt not be afraid of him. So we can know a false prophet from a true prophet, depending, does that prophecy come true? So there are true prophets and there are false prophets. There are people who claim prophethood, but one of the criteria that we can use in order to know that the claim is false, is that indeed the things they say don't happen. Now, there are people who do claim to be able to foretell the future. People who read the stars, for example, and they claim our fate is written in the stars. Muslims do not believe this. We do not believe our fate is written in the stars, nor do we believe that a, you know, a gathering of stars in any particular shape or form has any impact upon your fate whatsoever. There is no scientific evidence for that, whether there is some other thing. Well, we don't believe it as Muslims anyway. Your fate is determined by Allah. That is the one who has determined our fate. And it is only Allah who knows the future. No soothsayer and no prophesier except someone who is receiving revelation from Allah can tell us accurately about the future. In fact, the Prophet Muhammad, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him, said, Whoever believes a soothsayer or a fortune teller has disbelieved in what Allah has revealed to Prophet Muhammad. Whoever visits a fortune teller, even out of curiosity, then their prayers will not be accepted for 40 days. This is because fortune tellers are claiming, they are pretending to have a type of knowledge that only belongs to prophets themselves. And this is a great falsehood. However, I do not say, and Islam does not say, that these soothsayers and fortune tellers are not able to sometimes get some things right. They may guess some things and they may predict some things that may turn out right and they could do that just from guesswork. And that's why you often find that when these soothsayers and fortune tellers, they are predicting the future, they do manage to get things right that happen very close and that in the very near future. But the further and further they get away from their time, then the more and more inaccurate their prophecies start becoming. And this is certainly the case with a modern day soothsayer, Edgar Cayce, who was amazingly predicted, it seems, the Second World War, but as his prophecies moved further and further in today what is present time, his prophecies have seemed to become less and less accurate. Another thing is that the Qur'an does tell us, and the Prophet Muhammad does tell us, that the shayateen, the jinns, they are able to travel through the heavens, and they are able to sneak and listen to the angels, and the angels are carrying the commands of Allah, and they are obviously carrying the decree that is going to happen, and they are implementing that decree. So they may be discussing those things that Allah has decreed for the servants on earth, in that upcoming year or sometime in the future. And therefore they are able to listen to some of that and they bring that down to the soothsayer and the magician. Now they cooperate with the soothsayer and the magician because the soothsayer does 
many things that are displeasing to Allah and because of that they fall into disbelieving with Allah. But the soothsayer mixes up these truths with a hundred different lies. But you know what people are like, they just tend to remember the things that are true. But if you actually recorded all these things and examined them, then you would really see that yes, they got some things right, but they actually really got a whole load of things wrong as well. Then that is not really, of course, a sign of anything. But a prophet, someone who is receiving revelation from God, everything must be right. Every prophecy must come true. Now we have recorded from the earliest history of Islam prophecies in the Qur'an and prophecies of the Prophet Muhammad, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him. And we're going to compare those things to the cryptic writings, for example, of Nostradamus. Nostradamus is famous for, for his prophecies, but his writings are all very cryptic. The rhymes could mean this or that or anything. In fact, the soothsayers were no different in the time of the Prophet Muhammad. They used to have a sort of confusing rhyme that could mean this and could mean that. Let's actually now see some of the prophecies in the Qur'an and some of the prophecies of the Prophet Muhammad, may Allah's peace and blessings be upon him. Now one of the things that the Qur'an prophesies is the victory of Islam. And we have to remember that when these verses were coming down, the Muslims were a very small group. They were at every moment under the impression that they were going to be wiped out either by the pagan Arabs or then by the Romans. Yet the Qur'an is promising victory in different verses. Let's examine one of those verses. In the 24th surah in the 55th ayah, the Qur'an tells us, Allah has promised to those of you who believe and do good deeds that he will surely grant them in the land inheritance of power as he granted it to those before them, that he will establish in authority their religion which he has chosen for them and he will change their state of fear to one of security and peace and they will worship me and not associate anything with me and also the Quran says say to those who deny faith soon you will be vanquished and that is in the third chapter of the Quran in the 21st ayah and again in the 110th chapter of the Qur'an in ayah 1 to 2 when comes the help of God and victory and you see the people enter Allah's religion in multitudes the first verse was revealed at the time of the Muslims weakness and it promised them victory over the disbelieving people and it also said that people will enter Islam into crowds and this is exactly what happened after the capture of Mecca and during the time of the caliphs of Abu Bakr and Umar and Uthman and Ali, people entered Islam into crowds and Islam was established in the land and the Muslims defeated the Romans and they defeated the Persians and Islam was established from Spain to China in a matter of just 20, 40 years. And this also fulfills in part another prophecy of the Quran. It is he who has sent the messenger with guidance and the religion of truth to make it triumphant over all religions. This is in the ninth chapter of the Quran in the 33rd ayah. Allah is promising that Islam will be triumphant over all religions. Islam will be the largest religion in the world. And without doubt, this is what is happening today. Although it is perhaps 50-50 at the moment between Christianity and Islam, it is predicted by people who study this matter due to conversions and demographics that in, by the year 2050 30% of all human beings on this planet will be Muslim and it will make Islam the largest religion on the face of the earth. Actually what we find is that Judaism, Christianity and paganism have never really established a lasting dominance physically and intellectually since the coming of Islam even in terms of Christianity you may say the Christian world is dominant economically and militarily, but in reality, it is not really Christian. It is a type of secularist, materialist philosophy that is dominant. Anyway, join us after the break for more prophecies of the Prophet Muhammad. May Allah's peace and blessings be upon him in the proof that Islam is the truth. Don't go away. Come back and join us after the break. Asalaamu As Alaikum.
Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back to the proof that Islam is the truth where we are talking about the prophecies of the Prophet Muhammad. May Allah's peace and blessings be upon him. We talked about how Islam is going to be the dominant religion. Indeed, it is becoming that. It is that. Um, and we mentioned about how Islam until today is growing. And that how the Quran was promising the Muslims victory even though they were so small and they were so weak. Um, also, there is another prophecy in the Quran, in the 30th chapter of the Quran, in the verses 1 to 7, a very interesting prophecy. The Roman Empire has been defeated in a land close by. This is what the Quran is saying. But they, even after this defeat, will gain victory in a few years. Allah's is the command in the past and in the future. On that day shall the believers rejoice with the help of Allah. He helps whom he wills. Allah is the mighty and the most merciful. It is the promise of Allah. Allah never breaks his promise, but most men do not understand. They crave for the outer things of this life, but of the hereafter, they are heedless. Now, the Eastern Roman Empire, the Byzantine Empire, had for many years been fighting the Persian Empire, and they suffered a massive defeat at the hands of the Persians who captured Jerusalem in the year 614 of the Christian era. And after that, Egypt fell and then Syria fell. And Constantinople itself was laid siege to. This means a land close by. Now the pagan Arabs actually delighted in this as it seemed to signal to them the, the success of idolatry and its followers over the people who followed the revelation of Ahlul Kitab, the Christians in this case. And when this verse was revealed, it seemed impossible that the Roman Empire, the Byzantine ever, Empire, would ever recover. It seemed it was the end. The Persians had reached dominance. The Byzantines, it seemed, were finished. Now, the word in the Quran, translated a few, is bidah, which actually means anything from three to nine years. That term means anything from three to nine years. And Ubay, we mentioned him in a previous talk, Ubay, who was a pagan Arab, he actually betted Abu Bakr, who was a close companion and a friend of the Prophet Muhammad He betted Abu Bakr that this will never happen. This will never happen, he said. I'll take a bet. Now, this is before gambling was forbidden. Of course, gambling is not allowed. And that was forbidden later. And so they actually took a bet of 100 camels. That's about 150,000 pounds in modern day money. That's quite a lot of money. 100 camels is a lot. And they wagered that this will never happen. Now, it actually did happen. By the year 623, Heraclius, the Byzantine Empire, took to the field and vanquished the Persians in a series of battles, culminating in the Battle of Nivev. And this was in 627. By this time, in fact, Ubay had been killed, so his relatives actually had to pay the debt to Abu Bakr. And at this time, when the Romans won, the Muslims had been victorious over the Quraysh and were rejoicing just as the Quran had prophesied. The prophecy came true exactly. And it is a great reminder that Allah knows and you don't know. And little do men understand. And it is the same Quran that is warning us about the dangers of disbelieving in Allah and His messengers and not following His revelation. It is the same Quran that warns us of the hellfire and invites us to the paradise and warns us of the distress and the misery that people will suffer on the day of judgment for not following the truth. Anyway, we've got some more prophecies for you coming up. So let's mention these are some prophecies from the hadith or the sayings of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. And there is a long narration that is found in the two authoritative books of hadith. This means Bukhari and Muslim. We've mentioned Sahih al-Bukhari before. Sahih al-Muslim, we also mentioned it previously, in fact. These are considered to be the most two authentic sources of information, textual information, in the religion of Islam after the Qur'an. Now, according to this long hadith, the Prophet Muhammad was sitting in a garden, and Uthman ibn Affan walked in, 
And the Prophet asked Abu Musa Ash'ari, who was with him, to inform him of the good news of paradise. So to tell Uthman of the good news of paradise. And also that people would mutiny against him. And this exactly is what happened. It is well known from Islamic history that the people did mutiny against Uthman ibn Affan. In fact, they even killed him. Prophecy came true exactly as the Prophet had said. In another narration, while the Muslims were fighting the Jews in Khaybar, after some days of attempting to besiege the fortress, the Prophet said the next day he would entrust the flag to a man whom Allah would give victory. And he gave the flag to Ali, and the same day the fortress was conquered by the Muslim under Ali's command as the Prophet Muhammad had prophesied. In another hadith, the Prophet Sallallahu said, The Caliphate will last for 40 years, then there will be a biting kingship. So the Caliphate will last for 40 years. The Caliphate are the righteous successors of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And then after that, there will be a biting kingship. So the Prophet said 30 years, and it happened exactly like this. The rule of the rightly guided Khulafa, meaning Abu Bakr, Omar, Uthman and Ali was exactly 30 years. Okay, so we had Abu Bakr for two, Omar for 10, Uthman for 12, Ali for two and a half, and Hassan, who succeeded Ali ibn Talib, was three and a half years. So that makes, as the Prophet ﷺ said, exactly 30 years. After that, evil spread and kingship was established just as the Prophet Muhammad said would happen. In another hadith, the Prophet Muhammad he predicted the capture of Egypt. Remember, this is a time when the Muslims, they're just a small group of people. Yet he's telling them, you're going to capture Egypt. And he even said and told them, treat the people well. And he mentioned also that they would seize the treasures of the Persian emperor. Can you imagine this? He is telling them, you will defeat the Persians. You will seize the treasures of the Persian emperor. And he described the palace. And all of these things happened as the Prophet Muhammad wasallam said. He even mentioned concerning one particular companion, Surakha ibn Malik, that you will wear the bracelets of the Persian emperor. And in fact, this is exactly what happened. The bracelets fell into the possession of Umar ibn al-Khattab. He called Suraka, who was still alive. Of course, he could have been killed in all of these world wars, but he was alive. And Umar put the bracelets on him and reminded him of what the Prophet ﷺ had said. Also, in Sahih al-Bukhari, Auf ibn Malik, he reported that the Prophet ﷺ said, look for six incidents before the last day. First, my death. Then, and this is of course true, the Prophet died. Then the conquest of Jerusalem, and the Muslims conquered Jerusalem. Third, an epidemic among them. Fourth, the abundance of wealth, so a man would not gladly accept 100 dinars if given it. Fifth, a trouble that would involve all Arab families without exception. Sixth, a treaty with the Christians, which the Christians would violate. So the hadith describes exactly what happened. Jerusalem was captured, and after this, in 16 years, after the hijrah of the Prophet, an e epidemic broke out, it's well known about, and 70,000 people died. Wealth became plentiful after that, especially during the Caliphate of Uthman, and after that, in the time of Umar ibn Abdulaziz, as his soul famous, when the collectors of zakat, they found no one, who was poor enough to receive the zakah. There was no one poor enough to receive zakah money. That's how wealthy the Muslims had become, and that's the prosperity Islam brought to the world at the time. And this is exactly what happened. Also, after the rebellious war uh, against Uthman, things became worse after his murder, and it is true that none of the Arab families were saved from the fitna of that from the trials and the tribulations. In the, after the murder of Uthman, there was not one family that accepted was involved in it, just as the Prophet ﷺ had said. In another narration, the Prophet said that the Muslims would conquer Rome and Constantinople. 
and the prophet was asked which was first and he said the city of Heraclius which of course means Constantinople and that is absolutely true of course Rome has never been taken by the Muslims and then I suppose this is something we'll have to say that every Muslim will believe this is still something that is due to happen sometime in the future okay but Constantinople certainly was conquered by the Muslims okay and what is noteworthy here is that these predictions were made at a time again when the Prophet no one could imagine that the Muslims were going to do such things okay the Prophet also in many I'm just saying very quickly some prophecies here the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam also predicted that the Muslims would divide into many different sects and different groups and in some hadith he described the characteristics of these sects and these groups that would arise he mentioned that some of them would do to Ali what the Christians did to Jesus in other words they would claim that Ali is God how can a Muslim ever claim that a human being is God this is the greatest type of disbelief you can imagine to claim that a human being is equal with Allah the Prophet said some Muslims will do this with Ali and they did first of all a sect arose exaggerating and in their love for Ali ibn Talib and then this same sect subsects of them went on to even claim that Ali is Allah is equal with God and that this group by the way still exists until today also he mentioned that some people would deny the Qadr or the divine decree of Allah and he called them the Majus of this Ummah, the Magians of this Ummah and this has happened exactly, they were called the Qadriya, a group of people who denied the divine decree which is an essential part of Islamic belief and he also mentioned uh, that a tribe, a group would arrive from a certain tribe and the Prophet pointed out this individual and they would say that the people who are believers are unbelievers they would apply the verses of the Quran talking about unbelievers to the believers and the Prophet mentioned very bad things about them and said in fact he called them the dogs of the hellfire because they are saying that the true believers are in fact disbelievers and the Prophet mentioned and pointed out this man and it happened that a group arose called the Khawarij these Khawarij actually most of them were exactly from the tribe this man the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam pointed out and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned that they should be fought against and this is exactly what Ali ibn Talib did he fought against this group the Khawarij so these are some of the hadiths of the prophecies of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and we have a lot more in fact to come we're going to be mentioning some of the signs of the day of judgment things that the Prophet Muhammad said would happen before the last days and that will be our last in the episode of the proof that Islam is the truth so make sure you tune in and listen into that for our last and final episode of the proof that Islam is the truth until then assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh